Welcome back to The Breakfast uh, here on PLOS TV Africa. Now let's get through some of the big stories making headlines uh, across the country this morning. We're joined by G.D. Johnson, who's the Chief Lecturer at Nigerian Institute of Journalism. Good morning. Thanks for joining us, sir. Good morning. Thanks for being here. Good morning. Great to have you. And thank God it's Friday. To share your Friday with our, <laughs> and with our viewers all over the world. Absolutely. Let's get with uh, the Nigerian Tribune this morning and see what major stories we can find. It says there, why those without NIN risk imprisonment? And that's from the federal government. 2.1 billion Naira arms deal. Appeal court frees Dokwesi firm. And we can also see here, alleged assault NBA to investigate CCT chairman. NDLEA arrest uh, Ghanaian Boko Haram or Chadian Boko Haram drug supplier in Taraba. And we can also find uh, resident doctors strike paralyzes hospitals. 24 hours after, NAF fighter jets still missing in Northeast. And uh, one or two others that we can also find here. U.S. report on lekki shooting stirs fresh debate. Kayamo, Buari's aide, Songwulu spokespersons, others react. Uh, rice traders protest, uh, protest rather, as customs raid over 88 shops at midnight in Ibadan. These are the big ones that we can find uh, on the Tribune this morning. And on the Punch newspaper, FG threatens NAD as doctors begins strike after agreement. Ngige here tells doctors, if you don't agree, we don't sign agreement. Hospitals reject non-emergency cases. FG proposals not new, resident doctors. The rector here is saying resident doctors are foot soldiers and strike will affect hospitals. Above the uh, headline, external reserves lost $178 million in March. That's according to the CBN. INEC targets 20 million new voters. Registration begins June 28th. Bandits invade Niger. Joins forces camp. Kill seven, abduct ten. Minister here saying Nigerians without NIN risk 14-year imprisonment. Below the banner, APC bows to pressure. Extend registration by three weeks. Two Chinese abducted a Shoinka warns Amotekun against abuse. NYC demands increased troops deployment in orientation camps. Controversy as customs invade Lagos markets, cut away rice and cash. MBA to probe CCT chairman's assault on Abuja guard. Headsman Machet's Undo female farmer for resisting grazing on plata plantation. And there are pictures here on the front page of the Punch newspaper of hospitals in Abuja and Lagos, um, hospitals in Abuja and Lagos. And we can see just how empty the wards are, the waiting rooms are empty, and just a few people sitting outside you know, the hospital. And the caption here reads, wards and patients, reception points at Wuse General Hospital Abuja, and a corridor at the Lagos State University Teaching Hospital Ikeja, as resident doctors begin nationwide strike on Thursday. All right, now to the Guardian newspapers. Uh, we can now uh, see the big one there. WHO, Africa CDC, one of COVID-19 surge as Christians mark Easter. Uh, also on the Guardian, federal government diverting rivers armored choppers to fight Boko Haram, Wiki alleges. And the LEA, NAB's Chadi and Boko Haram drug supplier in Taraba. And the INEC rejects NIN as voter registration begins June 28th. Nigerians without NINs risk 14-year jail term, says the federal government. Um, I think that's where we're okay. Well, doctors strike paralyzes hospitals, patients groan. It's pretty similar stories across uh, uh, most of the major uh, newspapers this morning. Yes, so um, let's go to the Nation newspaper. Um, it says, how plots to extend APC caretakers' panels tenor was stalled. Five suspects arrested over attack on Soludo and how it happened. Amoteku Supermarshal MBA Showing car becomes Ogun Amuteku Super Marshal. MBA to probe CCT chair. Uh, strike paralyzes hospitals. Patients move out of hospitals in Ibadan, Kaduna, Joss, and Ekiti. Resident doctors say they have no faith in a memorandum of understanding. 51 million Nigerians captured in NIN registration. Buhari celebrates with Christians. Uh, I believe that should be over Easter. 
Fahimi not planning to take land for ranching, says Monarch. And kidnapping, banditry, 53 held in Oshun, Kwara, and Plateau State. I believe those are the stories we can take on the front page of the newspapers this morning. Mr. G.D. Johnson, uh, thanks again for joining us. Uh, do we begin with this big one regarding the, the strike? FG here is threatening NAD, saying no agreements. Uh, if they don't agree to the government's proposal, they would not sign an agreement. But on the other hand, the resident doctors say they have no faith in the federal government's MOU. How do we move on from here, Mr. G.D. Johnson? Which type of negotiation do you see that one party is threatening the other party? What type of negotiation is that? That the party will be threatening the other party. Sometimes I think some of our public officials elected and appointed usually think that we are still in the military regime. They don't know that we are in a democracy. They don't understand the basic principles of conflict resolution. The, the approach of government to solving this problem does not show an approach of someone that is coming as an interested party in solving the problem. Because if you are using threats, intimidation, and what have you, for professionals that are highly sought and required by others, if you are looking for a sector where we have the highest form of brain drain, is our, is our health sector. Because doctors, nurses, and other medical personnel are highly in demand all over the world. If they are not in demand, the president himself will not be seeking medical tourism abroad. So as far as I'm concerned, government must come up, must understand that if you are going to a negotiation table, you must be willing to give and take, and you must not go as um, as the bigger as the bigger party. Uh, at least you must you must be able to make concession because that approach emboldening the doctors to go ahead with their strike. On All the right. other hand, um, for doctors, I don't know um, what, I've never seen doctors striking any part of the world except in Nigeria. I've never, I've never read, it has never come to my, to my, to my understanding. It's only in Nigeria that we see that doctors go to strike regularly. We should deal, um, doctors are meant to save life first and foremost, and the fundamental issues should be resolved once and for all. Unfortunately, most of the people at the policy making levels are doctors themselves. And now they can't resolve this issue. The DG, the DG of Ministry of Federal, Ministry of Health, I'm sure will be a medical doctor. The Minister for, for Labor and Product is a medical doctor. I'm sure the Minister for Health himself will be a medical doctor. So all of these issues should be resolved. They should be able to know the plights of their of their members, but sometimes in Nigeria, we put the square peg in the round hole and the round peg in the square hole. Okay, now That's also a, let's also quickly uh, talk about the um, NIN registration and the threat of jail term or see, fines. You will see the contradiction. You will see the contradiction. INEC said, INEC said continuous voter registration will start June 28th, and they said they are not going to use NIN. Now it's from the same government. Now the minister said any Nigerian whose SIM is not registered will go to jail. Which law enabled the minister to say that? Which law? I think people should understand that we operate in a democracy. We operate in a constitutionalism society. A constitution that a country that operates based on the constitution, not subject to the whims and the caprices of elected or appointed public officials, that everybody will just wake up one day and make a pronouncement that becomes a proclamation as if he's an emperor or a king. We are not operating the monarchical system of government. So I want the minister to tell me the law that gives him the power to say any Nigerian that has this will go to jail. Uh, Mr. Mr. Jide Johnson, the minister actually quoted sections of the NIMSI Act. You know, he quotes Section 27 and Section 9. He says, those sections of the NIMSI Act makes it compulsory for all Nigerians who want to do business, open bank accounts, and conduct transactions to register for their NIN. But we know that this has never been enforced until now. Okay, well, unfortunately, I'm sure that when this bill was, was actually passed, most, um, 
most it was they, I'm sure they must have done their um, public hearings um, quickly and pass such bills. Laws are made for man and not man um, made for law. I think there are some laws that you need to look at. There are things that, and what is the essence? It should not be the problem. It should not be under the purview of NIMSI. That should be under the purview of Federal Ministry of Finance. It should be under the purview of Central Bank of Nigeria. Are you getting what I'm saying? That shouldn't be something on that national communication policy or the rest of it. Now, we, are, we have a situation where agencies of government are encroaching on the roles and responsibilities. I'm sure if we bring the laws establishing Central Bank, the laws esta uh, establishing how you operate a business in Nigeria, you will see some contradictions in this law. But you know, we don't test the constitutionality of the actions of those we have appointed or elected into office. We don't test it at the court. Now, one of the ways in which you strengthen democracy is to test the constitutionality of some of the laws that have been passed, whether they, they can pass the ultimate test of the constitution or not. And as far as I'm concerned, we just don't come out and make us every, okay, if they throw every Nigerian to jail, which day do they have? <laughs> Tell me. All yeah, right. only which 51 day? million Nigerians have been registered. Care of them. I said only 51 million Nigerians have been registered for the NIN. Uh, statistics say we're over 200 uh, million. So yes, like you say, if they were to arrest it, every other person, it, do they yeah, have the first I, I, th I think it's also important. Now, Asagi, yes. Asagi, should focus be on punitive, listen, should focus be on punitive measures or focus should be on how to get Nigerian registered? Should focus be on punitive measures? Right, Definitely. That, okay, you are looking for means to punish people or you create a system, a system that make it easier for people to get registered. Are you getting what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So in, in Mr. when Mr. public Gino officials Johnson. are looking at the punitive measures, they are adopting a wrong approach. Should, should it also, is it, is it also great to, you know, create, you know, like you said, measures, you know, that make it easier to get registered and at the same time also um, make it, you know, pretty much necessary, you know, because, you know, without registration, you might be limited from certain government, um, um, you know, facilities. You know, shouldn't that be the way it works? You know, without a social security number, for example, you may not be able to get, you know, this from the United States government or that. Um, should that be, you know, a better way to encourage Nigerians to, you know, get registered? Or, of course, maybe because the government also might be failing a little bit with providing certain, you know, um, social amenities, so they can't really use that. Nigerians, Nigerians are the most cooperative set of people you have in the world when you want to gain compliance concerning something. However, they do what you do and they observe you and react accordingly. And because the thing is, what is government giving back to you? are talking about social security. You don't need any, you don't need to go through, you don't need a comment to pass through the needle's eye for you to get your social security. There's a system in place okay. that the moment you get your green card automatically, your social security. Mr. Is Jide there. Johnson, so please, I'll, I'll, pardon my measures? interruption. To, pardon my interruption, Mr. Jide Johnson. Hello? We actually, I said, pardon my introduction, please. We have a section dedicated to this topic later on on the show. So I want us to quickly, you know, go through other papers uh, on that we've seen today. There's this one here on the Punch newspaper. It says that customs invaded the market in Lagos State and, you know, carted away money and rice. So taking a look at the story here, we saw that, you know, they, wait, they went to the market in Ikotun, Lagos State. And men of the customs on Wednesday, March 24th, they actually, you know, brought trucks to the market. They carted away 529 bags of rice at least and 5 million naira cash. People who were in the market who maybe went, went out, excused themselves for a minute, came back and found that the, their money as much as 600,000 were gone from their shops. How do we rationalize this action if they're saying they went in there to, to seize foreign rice when as customs official they should have checked this at the borders before letting it sit through? Is this legal, basically? When agencies of government are operating as bandits, so you have banditry approached by the customs. You have, you have, uh, from your comment, you see that what were they looking at? Custom is to protect the border, not to come within. Now, what were they looking at? What measures, through which border? It should be investigated. And they look at 
how that rice got into Nigeria and internally sanctions should be applied to officials that are given responsibility to man those borders, not to invade, not to invade the shops of, of that. Those ones should go to court. They should go to court. You can sue agencies of government. Nigerians are always scared of going to court. How would you, did they get a court order to do that? I'm throwing it to you. Did they get a court order? Oh, I, I doubt I that. So. Very unlikely. In, in, they are operating under, under the provisions of the constitution that established them, and that gives them the right to go into a, a private property, invade that property, took their money. Now, if you are taking, are they EFCC that should take money? Is EFCC that this with financial crime? If they want to, they should seize goods and property. They are in terms of seizing goods. Now, the money, how can they ascertain that that money they took is the money for rice? Those that are involved, you go to, you get the lawyers, you go to court and sue them. All right, quickly. I'm not supporting smuggling. Yeah, Joe yeah. Johnson, quickly, let's also I'm just uh, throw in your views on the uh, back and forth with regards to the Lekki Togate shooting. Uh, the United States government put out a report, and Amnesty International is saying completely otherwise uh, that, yes, you know, they, they um, confirm that people were killed at the Lekki Togate. The United States says that there's no actual verification of uh, a massacre at the Lekki Togate. Uh, what's your response? Well, um... United States, of America, United States of America can come to Nigeria and tell us what happened in Nigeria. And I'm sure CNN did a documentary on that concerning Lekki Toolgate issue, which is an English media organization based in Atlanta in the United States of America, headquartered in Atlanta in the United States of America. And there have been various media organizations, both local and international, that have done something um, Lekki Toolgate. And then we have also seen at various panels where people have come to testify with respect to what happened. Uh, people are carried away. People are carried, people are carried away with United States. United States. It is what happened within, and you don't. Uh, you also have to understand the, the 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 national interest of United States of America. It might not be in tandem with our own national interest at this particular point in time. I discounted that whatever United States of America has written concerning that. I listened to what testimonies that have been given by actual victims, and I listen to reports that have been given by me. All right, I, I guess that's, sound, that's yeah. our cue. Thank you very much, Mr. Jidia Johnson. Unfortunately, we wish you could wrap up on your thoughts there. But yes, thank you so much again. That's uh, what we call it today on yeah. Off the Press. We'll take a break here and return with Today in History. Do stay with us.